Let's shift focus now and take a closer look at what is happening with some Nigerians numbering up to about 400 who are said to have been stranded and inhumanely treated in China. There's been a video which has gone viral online. Let me show you in case you have not seen it. Oh, give me all the Nigerian passport. Oh, hey, so How many? I have three here. Yes, three. Yes. 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 Come down. Come down. Come down. How many? So, so, so I have two here. And where are Friday? A bonner. Who's a bonner? 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 Who's a and then they have given them the paper. Why are they giving them another 14 days? That is one. Two, all the police, the documents, this passport belongs to the federal government of Nigeria. In line with international practice, no any country has the right to see the international passport of another country. That was perhaps one of those incidents that happened uh, the other night, uh, a case that has gone online and went viral. But we understand that about 203 persons are on business trip amidst these people, and about 170 others are resident in China, but are now caught in this situation. A recent video has also surfaced online, which showed these people being given food by a Nigerian official. Take a look at, at it now. give out food to those Nigerians who are stranded there. About 400 of them, as we understand. So let's talk about this. I'm now being joined by the Senate Committee Chair on Diaspora Affairs, Senator Ajibola Bashir. Senator, thank you so much for sparing time tonight to speak on these. What is the state of things as, uh, from the perspective of the Senate on this matter? Has it gotten to your table, and what are you doing about it? Uh, good evening, Shion. Uh, as you see from the uh, penultimate video that you showed, that uh, was a Nigerian official of the Nigerian Commission in China uh, making intervention upon complaint by Nigerians in the uh, diaspora in Guangzhou about e treatment being meted on them by some Chinese authorities. And uh, as you can uh, see, uh, earlier on, the initial development of the story was that there was complaint on the social media about e treatment of Nigerians. And uh, when uh, some of us were consulted, uh, seeing that on the social media, uh, we advised the community in Guangzhou to alliance with the Nigerian, uh, em uh, Nigerian embassy in that place, and the Federal Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs also intervened. And that is why you see active representation of the situation that uh, was anomalous by the uh, Nigerian representative, uh, Mr. Lawal, in that uh, first video that you have been seeing. And uh, from the report that uh, uh, we, we got, there appeared to be a misapplication uh, of uh, the requirement of uh, uh, a social distancing and the quarantine for lockdown. Uh, rather than the first initial 14 days, uh, they were being expected, even after they have been able to uh, show that they were not uh, uh, in any way infected after 14 days, expected to say another 14 days, which uh, was considered to be anomalous. The second issue that has also come to light was even when in isolation that uh, they were insisting, there was insistence of being fed uh, what, what manner of food the 
Chinese authority and we chose to do. But I can tell you that as of this evening, I have video on my uh, phone that show that Nigerian uh, embassy in the China has taken it upon itself to provide food uh, for Nigerians in isolation so that they are not compelled to uh, be forced I mean, to eat food that they are not used to. I think this is a matter of uh, a diplomacy between the two countries, and it's not a matter that uh, we can be able to resolve without using the appropriate channel. The Federal Ministry of Foreign Affairs has uh, liaised with the appropriate I mean, authority in uh, China. And you can also see that at the level of the National Assembly, the Right Honorable Speaker uh, of the House of Rep had a meeting with the representative of China in this country where a protest was laid as to uh, the maltreatment of Nigerians in those places. So I think the, the, the necessary diplomatic effort has been put in place in order to uh, stem the tide and ensure that the rights of Nigerians are protected irrespective of the fact that they, were not, they are not in their country. Senator, um, some of them are asking, uh, what we understand is that there is a need for an urgent evacuation. When do you think that ha that can happen based on the information that you have? The, the question of evacuation, yes, uh, as we say, urgent, but also uh, require some protocol and some procedure to be put in place. First and foremost, the objective of the Nigerian government, as we have seen from what has been said by the coordinator of the uh, presidential tax force, is to ensure that we, as much as possible, curtail the spread of infection in the country. So we, the process of uh, evacuation uh, will only begin First, by signifying interest as to who is to be evacuated, what will be the procedure for evacuation. I think one tiny area which has not been uh, resolved now is should there be tests on the uh, people to be evacuated before they, they, they are allowed to uh, be evacuated to Nigeria, or it should be that when they return to Nigeria, they should be put in a quarantine isolation for 14 days to ensure that the objective of stemming uh, the pandemic in Nigeria is not jeopardized by hurried evacuation of Nigerians in that regard. And uh, there appear to be a point of divergence between the Federal Tax Force and the, the Atlas of our Foreign Affairs. Whereas the Atlas of Foreign Affairs were insisting that tests should be conducted before evacuation, it will appear that this will be a tall order because unless you show some symptoms, tests are not being done freely, they are not being done at the whim of an individual, even in the United Kingdom or United States, there must be some form of uh, intelligence uh, and surveillance that will throw up whether you need to conduct a test or not. So I think the issue of the test possibly uh, may have to be looked into, uh, into, but then as Nigerians, uh, the Nigerian authority must ensure that those coming in are protected, properly, proper surveillance carried upon them, and they are properly quarantined so that they don't come into the country and they lead to a situation whereby we have a serious community infection. And I'll give example of the situation of the evacuees from uh, Cote d'Ivoire right. uh, that uh, uh, went to Oshun. You can see that proactively the government in that state, in Oshun, were able to get all the people that were coming, all put right. them in a particular place, Tests were conducted on all of them, and I think about 17 of them uh, were found to be uh, positive. 10 of them have been discharged now. So the, 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 you have to balance between the right. interest of protecting our Nigerians okay. abroad and ensuring that an evacuation that is done is done in a way that it does not jeopardize the effort at stemming the tide of pandemic in Nigeria. Senator Bashir Ajibola. Uh, Senate Committee Chair on Diaspora Affairs and the NGOs. Thank you so much for clearing the air and speaking on this matter tonight. Thank you so much indeed. It's my pleasure, so stay safe. Thank you. You too, please. Well, that's our show, but tonight, before we go, it has been some tough cough for some patients at the COVID-19 treatment center in Lagos. Those who may not be able to celebrate Easter with their loved ones, no matter how low-key. But here is something to brighten their day. A popular gospel musician, uh, BJ Sack, threw them to some gospel music, a ray of light in what may be a dark moment for them. And that's what we call a good deed on Easter day. And that's our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Shinwa Kimalue. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, Easter Sunday.